told you enough. You're looking for adventure. Well, this is it. I'm a bruiser, yet I'm blinky. And we're here to win. I said, Bucky! Captain Bucky O'Hare! New Bucky O'Hare at you, figure sold several more. All right, today we're going to be taking a look at Bucky O'Hare, a kind of overlooked series from the 1980s. Now, Bucky O'Hare originally debuted in a, a comic book series called Echoes of Future Past, written by Michael Golden, and was turned into a graphic novel but was never published. Bucky O'Hare would really gain popularity in uh, fall of 1991 and 1992 as an animated TV show, Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars. Now, the storyline of Bucky O'Hare follows a parallel universe, the Aniverse, where there's all animated animals that live there, where Willie DeWitt, a boy from planet Earth, is sucked into a war between the United Animals Federation and the sinister Toad Empire, who was run by Complex, who has brainwashed the entire Toad population. Unfortunately, it would only run for one season. Even though it did spawn a line of action figures, the series never caught on. It did, however, also spawn a successful comic book series line that ran for a number of years and gained in popularity, and a mildly successful NES game, Bucky O'Hare, by the same title. It didn't do as well, even though it was a great game, and I highly recommend you picking it up and playing it, even though it's very expensive. It just came out too late in the NES's lifespan to catch on. So here we have our main protagonist, Bucky O'Hare. He's a green rabbit and captains a mammal spaceship named the Righteous Indignation. Next we have Commander Dogstar, who is the commander of the SPACE, or Space Organization, which stands for Sentient Protoplasm Against Colonial Encroachment. Try saying that five times fast. Then we have Bucky's right-hand man, Deadeye Duck, a four-armed gunner and a former space pirate from Canopus 3. He's missing an eye, impatient and violent, and prefers to let his four laser pistols do the talking for him. Then we have Jenny, Bucky's first mate and pilot. A cat from the planet Aldebaran, not to be confused with Alderaan from another similar universe. She's a telepath with mysterious magical and psionic powers that are common to females of her species. She keeps them secret to the rest of the crew because she's afraid that they'll frighten them, with the exception of Willie, who she serves as kind of a surrogate mother to. Then there's Bruiser, a Betelgeusian berserker baboon who joins Bucky's team as a space marine on the Righteous Indignation. Like all berserker baboons, he scares the toads out of their wits and loves to beat them up. He's dim-witted, but well-meaning. On board the Righteous Indignation is also Blinky, an advanced AFC, or Android First Class. He has only one eye, as you can see, and he uses the phrase calamity and woe to identify problem situations for Bucky and his crewmates. Then we have Willie DeWitt engineer and a teenager from San Francisco who enters the Aniverse via a portal between the ship's photon accelerator and his own accelerator at home. He replaced their former engineer Bruce who was killed and attained oneness with the Aniverse, as they say. Later Willie became stranded in the Aniverse when his parents turned off the photon accelerator back in his room at home on Earth. Bucky and his crew decide to keep Willie a secret from the space organization and the Toads for his own safety. Then, of course, we have the villains of the Aniverse. Complex, the undisputed ruler of the Toad Empire. This computer program was designed to run the consumerist Toad culture, but instead it took over and militarized it. Its name, in Toad language, is an anagram for Feed Me. Then we have the Toad Air Marshal, one of Complex's foremost commanders with a uniform adorned with medals and a face covered in warts. Then we have one of Complex's most terrifying super weapons and elite troops, Toad Borg, part toad, part robot, all evil. And of course, last but not least, the foot soldiers of the Toad Empire, Storm Toads. These mindless toad soldiers serve as the primary attack force for the Toad Empire and follow any commands given to them. Alright, so here's some of the toys I'm going to be taking a look at in the Bucky O'Hare toy line made by Hasbro and released in 1991. I have both of the major vehicles here, so let's go through them and I'll show you what I got here. So here I have my three good guys that are involved with the uh, Space Federation along with their uh, vehicle. This is Bucky O'Hare, the little uh, green, righteous, freedom-fighting rabbit. And he's got a cool motif with his yellow, and I love the green face and the little weird 
tufts on the side, the cape with the red, uh, the, I'm sorry, the red cape with the yellow star on the back and the ears and just the Martian looking rabbit, very cool. And here we have Commander Dogstar. And he's really goofy looking. You gotta love that big pit bull face with the tooth overhanging his lip. And he's got his space suit here and his commander hat. Woof! He's just so darn cute. Gotta love the hat. And uh, he's, he's pretty neat, I think. Unfortunately, none of these guys have their uh, accessories or weapons except for one or two. It can be a little difficult to stand up, too. Their feet are not really evenly beveled, so they don't stand up so great. And here we have Bruiser, who is the uh, ape, well, Bruiser of the team. And he's, he's pretty cool. I, I like his uh, the way that he's designed and molded with the spikes on his cuffs and the other bracers on his legs. And even the way that he has uh, armor on his toes and the chain that connects around uh, from his nose to his ear. And uh, he's, a, he's a really cool figure. So that's all three of my good guy figures that I have here. And now we have some of the bad guy figures. And first off here, we're going to take a look at the Toadborg figure. And he's really cool because he's half cyborg, half toad, and all evil. He has his uh, little electrocution prod there to attack Bucky and his companions with. And you can see he's got those really cool bronze cybernetic legs with those uh, really cool metal to toes and the ventilator up in his chest and the uh, metallic head with the red eyes. So he's kind of like a Vader toad. You know, he has the mask and everything. Really cool looking. Definitely one of my favorites. And of course, wouldn't be complete without the storm toads. These guys are really goofy looking, but they're great. They just kind of make me laugh because they look so angry. Like they look like they're gonna burst a blood vessel, but uh, they're really well designed. I like the, uh, especially the, the shade of green they chose for them look great. And they have the skull and crossbones on their chest for stomping out uh, Bucky O'Hare. And now let's have a look at the Space Federation's main heroic vehicle, the Toad Croaker. And you can see it has nice Bucky O'Hare logos and stickers. Has the two big bright red laser cannons on the front. And it has a warning of the electrical panel back there. And inside by the steering wheel, I like that you can see there's a toad right in the viewfinder there. So, you know, you got them locked in your sights and ready to shoot them down. And uh, it's a really cool looking toy. And the big green thing on the bottom is used for squashing toads. So I think this is a really well designed vehicle. All right, so now let's take a look at the Toad Empire's main vehicle here. And this is the Double Bubble. And this is a really cool uh, spaceship that the Storm Toads use and other evil doers of the Toad Empire. You can see the dual exhaust ports in the back. I love the green and black stickers that really make it look like the ship has warts. Um, great stickering and design all over. Um, this should actually have two clear domes on the top, but I'm missing those. And you can see on the front the sticker that says clip the hair. And it has two guns that shoot out of the side that you can grab figures with. And it also makes a croaking sound when you fly the vehicle around whenever you move it. So I think that's a great little feature that they added to this really neat toy in the Bucky O'Hare line. Now, what do you do if those pesky toads from the Toad Empire, the Storm Toads and Cyborgs just won't leave you and your crew alone? What do you do if you can't just get a good night's rest and just save the galaxy in peace? Well, if those pesky toads are giving you a case of the warts, you can always hop inside of your trusty toad croaker and stomp those pesky amphibians flat. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look with me today at the Bucky O'Hare line of toys and other products. They're a pretty cool toy line and I really recommend if you see them picking them up. But if you see that NES game out there and you can get it cheap, I highly recommend giving that a try. See you next time. Hey guys, if you like the video that you just watched, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do the Facebook or Twitter thing, follow me at hashtag KingOfRetro. See you next time.